Hello, in this video I will show you how to create such a projector. I will show you how to create the projection on the surface itself and how to create the glow from the projector itself. First, I will create the projection on the surface. For this, a standard light source will help me. This is target spot. It is located in the standard section. In the lighting section, under standard, we have target spot. It is more convenient to draw it in the top view. I switch to the top view and draw target spot. I immediately direct the target onto the surface. Once I have drawn it, I select the target along with the target spot. And I lift it upwards. This is approximately how the projection should look. Now we need to connect the texture that the target spot will project. We go to the material editor. Here I already have a texture ready. Just drag and drop it from the desktop. I think everyone knows this. Now we need to connect color collection to it. I connect it. Here, general. Oh, maps, general. And here, we need to select color collection. This way, we will be able to adjust saturation, gamma, and other fine parameters. Now this connection needs to be linked to the target spot. I select target spot and go to its properties management. Next, we need the advanced effects section. And here is project map. I connect our setup to this channel. I connect it in instance mode. That's it. Now our spot will project the image onto the surface. Now it is very important to adjust the image ratio. We open intensity color. Oh, not intensity. Spotlight parameter. Here we have aspect. How do we find it? We open our image. Click view image. The image opens. Right click and hold on the image. Here we see width and height meaning the width and height of the image. We simply divide 1600 by 900, width by height, and we get 1.7. We enter this coefficient into aspect. Here, rectangle should also be selected. In general parameters, corona shadows is selected. If we had V-Ray running, we would select V-Ray shadows. Now let's open frame buffer to track changes immediately. I will start an interactive render. The image is too large now. We need to reduce it. As we see, it is too large, resulting in strong overexposure. To change the size, we need the following section. By the way, in intensity color, you can set multiply. That is, we adjust the brightness. If you set it to 1, it will be less bright. In my case, 5 is enough. To change the size, we go to the Spotlight Parameters section. In Hotspot Beam, we choose the size of the inner cone, and in Fall Off on Field, the outer one. Now everything is set up. Between them, the value is the transition from one cone size to another. Basically, this is how spots are made in light sources on walls. We can also control the outer and inner cone. For example, I will now set it to 50 and 70. While adjusting the outer cone. Now I will move the spot a little closer. Now it is very close to the window. These are approximately the values I got. The inner cone is 72 and the outer one is 78. It turned out pretty well. Now let's see how to adjust the image. That is, I want to make it a little less saturated. Going into color correction. Here I will set it to minus 25. Now in advanced mode, I will set gamma a little higher. 
to reduce overexposure in bright areas. I will set it for example to 1.5. And since the image has become brighter, let's reduce its brightness a bit. In RGB, I will set it somewhere around 75. Okay, I'll try reducing gamma a little. Apparently, it's too much. I'll set it to 1.3. And I will leave the brightness at 75. The only thing, on the actual target spot, I will now reduce the brightness. I will set it somewhere around 3. Yes, 3 is already pretty good. We can even slightly reduce the saturation. Set it to 35. Great. If the brightness is too high, we can even reduce it. I'll set it to 70. Yes, now it's pretty good. So, our image is ready. It is projected onto the surface. Now all that's left is to create the glow effect from the projector. To do this, I select the surface onto which the projection is being cast. The spot that projects, and select the projector. Isolate them with Alt plus Q, switch to top view. And here we need to draw a box. It doesn't matter what size it is, we just need to create it now. Then I convert it to editable poly. Go into vertex editing and draw something like a cone from the projector itself to the surface onto which we are projecting our image. From the side, I need to deform the box in the same way. That is, we are creating a kind of cone, which will extend from the projector to the image. I will raise it slightly higher. Let's see where our cone is. It ends approximately here. We need to adjust the top points similarly, and the bottom points to match the cone size, to match the image size, exactly to the image size. And I continue drawing, or rather, raising these points to the projectors. Now in a convenient view, switching, for example, to some frontal view, and creating a corona light. I create corona light in the shape of a disc and I draw it where the lens is, from where the projection light will come. I have drawn the lens. Now I will move it closer to the lens and rotate it to where it projects the image onto the laser. Now I position it more evenly. It needs to be tilted slightly. It can be made a little bigger. I'll even set the radius. Well, let's set it to 20 or even 25. The radius, meaning the size, also affects the glow effect, how strong it will be. So we set the direction in direction, or I set it closer to 0.5. You can set it to 0.5, but I don't go up to 0.5. I set it to around 0.49. So we have created the projector's light source and we have created a box. The box will serve as the area where the fog will be scattering the light and creating this projector effect. But right now, it doesn't have this property because it needs a specific material applied to it. But before that, I will mention one more thing. That is in light. I usually set it in exclude where we have exclusions. I switch it to include mode and I set it, or rather, add the box here, the box where the fog will be, so that it interacts only with it and does not illuminate anything else. Now I select the box, switch to the camera view, exit isolation mode, and the material needs to be applied. The special material is Corona Volume MTL. By right-clicking, I go to materials. Corona. Here, I need to select Corona Volume MTL and I apply it immediately, this material to the box, and make some adjustments. But first, I will enable interactive rendering so I can immediately see what is happening. Right now, nothing is happening because we haven't set up the fog at all. That is, the Corona Volume fog. First of all, in scattering. I'll change the black color to white. Now I'll set distance. Draw distance. 
our visibility distance. I'll set it to around 3 meters. This is the distance at which we can see through. We can even set it to 5000 visibility distance. Not bad already. And to make the color more visible, I'll make it a bit denser. I'll set the fog to around 100 visibility distance. And that's basically it. Basically, we've already achieved the desired effect. If I make it closer to black, meaning darker, this effect will be even stronger. Since the fog will be denser, the particles will be thicker. But I think even 80 would work. It should be fine. I set in the light source, in this disk light source, the brightness to about 700. Because the effect was barely visible at all, it can be reduced. I increased it for demonstration and I set it in directional. I'll even show you now how I set it, so it's clearer. Selecting the disk. And here, I set intensity to 700. My value is set to default units. And then, in directional, I set it to 0.49. That is, I set it up to 0.5. If you set it to 0 here, the effect will not be as extended up to the image so it needs to be stretched as much as possible. That's why we set the direction up to 0.5. Basically, you can set it to 0.5. If you set it to 0.6, it will be directed like this. Too much. So I think the most optimal option is up to 0.5. I usually even set it to 0.48. In this video, we looked at how to create a projector with a glow effect. If you have any questions, ask them in the comments. I'll try to answer them all. If this lesson was useful, subscribe to the channel and leave a like.